All right, everybody, welcome to the podcast. I have a very, very special guest. We have Eva Warden from Warden Farms, and I've been shopping with her for some years. She is in her buggy at her farm. Welcome, Eva. Hi, I'm so glad to be here today. And I'm, yes, I'm out in the field. Um, it was the most quiet spot that I could find because it's the middle of a weekday here at Warden Farm and it's busy. And so, yeah, I'm out in the field on the buggy. Um, you want to start with my story, my, my history. Yes. And my I don't even know story. your story. So I'm so uh, grateful for this time, you know, yeah. you're always busy at the farmer's markets. It's not like you can right. get any more than, you know, a few seconds with you. So I'm like, I yes. get to learn about the whole story. So I'm excited. Right. So Word and Farm is an organic family farm in Punta Gorda, Florida, on the southwest coast. And we created this farm. My husband, Chris, and I created this farm in 2003. We had been farming together before that um, since 1998, when we were both in grad school. And uh, Chris and I met in Maryland when we were both uh, having... Um, a horticultural sciences master's program um, in the same department with a very um, pretty much the same um, professors as our advisors. And we both wow. were studying the, the use of compost in vegetable crop production. <laughs> so um, it was uh, a, a natural thing for us to um, be together. And we uh, we then went on and both earned doctorates in um, his was in crop science and plant nutrition and mine was in ecosystem management and uh, that was in Connecticut he was at UConn and I was at Yale and then we came back down to Florida which is where I'm originally from and I was a professor of horticulture at um, University of Florida. Wow. And we were farming, uh, part, I was farming part-time and he was farming full-time at that point uh, based out of Homestead where there are uh, tropical fruits and um, Love it there. My, oh my yeah, and, and, and that's the, the part of the state where I grew up and still have family. And, um, and, and then we wanted larger property and we wanted um, sandy soils rather than the oolitic limestone. Those oolitic limestone soils are really great uh, for certain types of production, um, but <clears throat> for what we wanted to do, we really wanted the sandy soils. And most soils in the state of Florida are sandy. Uh, there's just a very specific kind of um, rock really <laughs> that's um, down in Homestead yeah. and like you can't put a shovel in the ground down there uh, and get, get very far um, in order to till the ground you have to use special equipment which we had been borrowing and it just was not really what, what we um, wanted to do for vegetables although vegetables do grow very well there uh, and we also didn't have access to the um, acreage that we wanted. So right. we we went ahead and we found the property in Punta Gorda where um, it's much more rural and yet it's also very accessible to urban centers within um, an hour's drive. So um, we got started farming here in 2003 and yeah, it's been 20 years at this property. And, um, you know, we have built our lives around it and it's, um, really just been amazing. Oh my gosh. 20 mm -hmm. years. And do you live close mm -hmm. to the farm? We live on the farm. Yes. You live on the farm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And it's how many acres yes. again? Um, so now it's 85 acres. When we first started, it was 55 and now it's a total of 85 acres. And um, about 40 of that is in active vegetable production and the remainder is in woodland and um, we have a few um, animals and um, the barns and roads and 
we've planted thousands of trees on the property as Yay. well. Um, yeah, Yay. so you can see some of it. Everything yes. you see behind me is part of our property. And, yes. Um, yeah, and, and what what we love about the farm, it, in addition to its productivity, which is really, you know, the foundation of it all, is that it's connected to an ecosystem that's much larger than us. And as organic farmers, we're very stewardship oriented. And so right next to us, there's an 80,000 acre wildlife refuge. And so we oh. have all kinds of amazing migrating birds that oh come through. It's really beautiful. And I must it's visit. right here. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Do you do and events on the farm? Events. We do have events on the farm. We have some wonderful brunches and farm tours. And of course, with COVID, things changed a lot, uh, but we're gradually uh, getting that going again. So we had a really nice brunch in January for United Way as a fundraiser uh, to help with some of the social service programs that focus on nutrition. And we've really... Um, become part of the community here um, in in a way that it's just very special to us, as well as the communities up in St. Pete and Sarasota, where we do the farmer's markets. Yes, so wonderful. So I was going to ask, what do you grow? I think you grow so much. It's more, what don't you grow? On the <laughs> you know, because I'm like, that would take a long time to list everything, you know? <laughs> So we don't grow what we can't grow here. I mean, we our our season is fall through spring, and the um, summer months are for growing cover crops, which improve the soil of the vegetable ground. And those crops are grown just to um, be reincorporated into the earth to decompose there and build organic matter and soil fertility for the upcoming vegetable crop cycle. But, it, you know, if you visit our farmers markets, you'll see just the abundance and the variety of so many different kinds of, of lettuces and greens and herbs and All the things. fruit and veg. Yeah. And, yeah. It's mostly annual crops. We do have a few different perennials, but mostly it's annuals. And um, that, that really helps us in terms of, um, you know, overcoming adversity. Like we had Hurricane Ian hit us directly yes. at the beginning of this season, lost like 20 acres of really ready to harvest crops uh, in the end of September, right before our first farmer's markets uh, were set to begin. And But with annual crops, you know, you replant and then you have another chance at it, even within that same season. Yeah. Uh, you know, compared to tree crops, which can take oh. up to three years to recover from. So. Absolutely. So in terms of fruits, you don't grow really any fruits. On the farm. We do have some fruits, but it's very limited. Um, and we do have the fruits um, down in Homestead, um, the where my family, and the yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have that um, from from the family um, down there. But yeah, you know the the fruits that that thrive here. Um, we have some really wonderful mulberries uh, oh, that we. Delicious harvest and bring to market but a lot of that is just enjoyed by people visiting the property and and yeah. by our team and and the family so. right right now what about the microgreens do you have a whole big setup for that yeah so you know mostly we do shoots um not sprouts and That's right. so mm -hmm. and and the difference with that is that they're being grown in soil and and not in um, just like water or yeah, uh, the coconut, which, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have a, a configuration that is, um, you know, with, with some shelving and to be space efficient and uh, because they don't need direct sunlight, right. Yeah. Until mm -hmm. the very end. And so it's um, yeah, that's a nice part of what we do. It's um, a little bit, uh, specialized and we um, usually have it all through the entire harvest season like compared to certain crops are only available in the warm 
part right. of the season or in the cooler time. Like, like we're not harvesting broccoli in um, early October because it prefers cooler weather and that would have had to grow on through August and September. And it's just too hot then for broccoli to do well. Right. Uh, we have collards then, which is a close relative of broccoli. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Great. So in terms of employees, because there's people that are on the farm mm -hmm. who probably mostly focus on the farm versus at the market mm -hmm. who just yeah. do the market. How many overall versus at each at the farm versus at the market? Right. Well, you know, that depends on the time of season. Um, oh. At certain times of the season, we just have a, a few and then it increases and then it um, ramps down toward the end of the season as, as things get less busy. Um, and that works really well for uh, many people's schedules and things that they do in uh, other parts of their life, you right. know. So uh, we we do have some people who are apprentices in other farms up north. Uh, one of our apprentices just went back. Uh, he went to a farm in Maine and he's going to do you know he finished out the season here even though we still have a month left and then he's going to be doing a, a full cycle up there uh, now wow. and so that's nice uh, to work with people in that way where it fits really well both with our season and um, you know with what's going on in another spot um, and then the folks at the oh, farmers markets usually a few people are from the farm that are at the markets nice. and th then some people are from within that community and they do other things during the week. And we have some really wonderful people um, who've been with us a long time at the markets and at the farm. And yeah, um, yeah it's really the nice. The same faces, you know, pretty much. <laughs> to, it's amazing. Yeah. The same, I, I don't know, is it about 15 at least people at the market that are there with you? Maybe more, 20? Uh, no, no, it's not that big. Is it not that many? I feel like there's so many <laughs> people up. always dealing stuff and doing uh, it things. It takes a lot. You know? It definitely takes a lot to make yeah. it happen. Um, but yeah, at the peak, it, it can be up to a dozen, but those are usually there just at the peak um, of the, the market. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, and and it's uh, a long setup at the farmer's market every morning. Oh. It takes three hours to just set up. up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's with being as efficient as possible. It's just the reality of the setup and the situation. But, um, you know, part of the setup is just doing uh, another round of quality control and, um, you know, looking at what we have and it, trying to present it in an artistic way and in yes. a way that is easy for customers to get in and get out and and also, you know, encourages a little lingering and conversation. And, yes. Because we're really there to create community and to help support people in the lifestyle that they want and to offer it in a way that is accessible and um, not intimidating and affordable. So we've had lots of conversations over the years with people, you know, oh, just like... Imagine. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people come in like you where they know what they're doing and like they're all, you know, and then there are people who walk in really like kind of um, overwhelmed and oh, overwhelmed. Yes. yes. And like, and and it's so gratifying to guide people toward things that might work for them and then to watch the relationship build as as they become you know, more uh, able to cook for themselves and create wellness for themselves through connecting with this yes. vibrant food. Yes. That's just so, mm -hmm. you don't think about that, but it's so beautiful to just hear mm -hmm. that changing those people's lives from the moment when you first saw them to, mm -hmm. you know, a year later or two years later. And it's like, wow, look at how much has changed, you know, now you know mm -hmm. how to make you know, so many meals that you would never, you didn't mm -hmm. even know what a zucchini was or whatever. Right. Right. It's right. Exactly. It is incredible. Yes. So really it is, it is a small business still for you. I mean, it's not a ton of employees despite having a 40, you know, 40 acres of operations. You keep right. it pretty. Yeah. 
Oh yes, easy. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And wow. and that is because we are, um, you know, we try to be very systematic and um, very efficient with the work that needs to be done. And uh, let me see. I'm hearing the irrigation. Who this might you? get really exciting. The the overhead sprinklers might turn That's on. So we'll see funny. what happens. Oh my gosh. Um, but but yeah, well, you know, we we really do try to be efficient and to um, every job that is done has been done by me and Chris, my husband. And I love no one, that. As business yeah. owners, you need to be able to at least have done it, even though you don't do it now, right. but you understand right. the ins and outs of the thing. Yes. Right? Yes. And if and if we see that a certain activity is not really viable, or if it's just um, you know, in need of improvement, we try to make it better because um, there are so many moving parts with a, a garden. I mean, oh. even if you've had just like a, a little like community garden plot or a backyard Absolutely. garden, you Absolutely. know, there's so much going on. And, and the same goes for a, a farm that is highly diverse like ours, where we have many different crops being harvested every week. Um, and, and then there's also the, um, the marketing part of it, where we take it to the farmer's markets. We also have a farm box that we deliver to uh, over a dozen places in Southwest Florida. And we have a farm stand on the farm once a week for members. So that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's so great. I love it. So Mm -hmm. organic farming um, is very vast. Do you have a particular Mm -hmm. method of, or, or, or a combination of methods that you like to utilize on your farm? Well, we are USDA certified organic and always have been. Uh, We feel that that program does a good job of, describing to um, people in the community a certain set of standards that um, they can look to and un- understand very transparently what is involved. And um, we abide by those standards and, and then some, you know, we, we go beyond the standards in terms of um, you know, our, our distribution is, is local, right? And so yes. our footprint, you know, you can be certified organic and, and not choose local distribution, but we really like that because we feel that the, the, the footprint on the earth is much less and it, it gives people a connection to the, uh, ecosystem that they're part of, whether they realize it or not, you know, being uh, drinking the water from a place and breathing the air and and then, of course, eating the food um, really helps you to to understand like that we're all responsible in some way and can participate in the stewardship of the earth. And not everyone is going to own land and and be a hands-on daily steward, but something that you do multiple times a day is going to have a direct impact and that's the food that you eat. So if you can make that choice, um, if that choice is available, then, you know, that's, that's something that we do that, that is above and beyond uh, with regard to organic. But as far as like the nitty gritty of, um, like the the practices we are very soil focused as i mentioned mm-hmm. my husband has a doctorate in uh, crop management and um you know soil and plant nutrition right and so that is um something that he's always very conscious of in the fertility management of of the soil here um the cover cropping is a big part of that and um he's um, always looking at the crop rotations as well. Um, and then the insect and um, disease management right. of the crops, you know, we, we grow crops that um, we know 
can do well during the time window that they're grown. Um, sometimes people will try to grow things like, like I was saying about growing broccoli in August, like you're just setting yourself up for having problems if you do that. Heartache um, for so, you, loss and heartache. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so really looking at it in, in, in a, a whole ecosystem way, but also looking at it like from an organismal perspective, yes. of like, okay, what does this crop need? to succeed and just it's it's about nurturing in a way that is sort of meeting them where they are <laughs> i guess absolutely you could say. absolutely uh, and 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 just trying to be as as facts based and and looking at cause and effect and mm -hmm. then having an iterative process constantly refining based on what we see happening so um we're also very conscious of it in terms of what people want to eat and what people yes. are are willing <laughs> willing to bring into their diets um, because there's a lot that we can grow really well but people just don't really know about and right. when we teach them about it and then they start eating it and it becomes a more popular crop like when we started farming that was before kale was as popular as it is now, if you can believe that. <laughs> but it is now uh, not just solely because of us, but because it it was a lot of education by a lot of farmers like us who brought it to chefs, who brought it to the public, and now you see kale everywhere. But everywhere. it wasn't part. Yeah, yeah. And, but it it was not part of the the um, diet of our communities back then. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, we're, we're very um, interested in soil based production. We feel that the quality of the food is excellent in uh, soil grown crops. And uh, that is, that's all based on on the uh, the nutrients and and the the fertility of the soil. So grateful that he did all that study to have that knowledge because mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. so key. You could be an organic farm, but that doesn't mean your soil is, mm -hmm. is healthy, right? Right. So right. That's... And now even it's possible to have organic certification and not be um, growing in the soil at all. Yes, that was a whole can mm -hmm. of worms I learned about like uh, some mm -hmm. years ago. It's like, right. oh, wow, right. Hydroponically, you can just be certified organic now. It's like, right. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Circumstances where, where that might be necessary and, and appropriate. Um, and it's just not for us as far as what we at our family farm want to do. And yeah. we, uh, we also do consulting and we help other farmers with their production systems and um, we're aware of and, and um, we understand the hydroponic systems um, but they're just we feel that there's a lot of um, of merit to growing in the soil when possible absolutely absolutely awesome um favorite things you like to grow or you're not you love all the things Yes, it's all, they're all my children. They're all your children. <laughs> uh, Can't be biased, uh, yeah. right? I, I will tell you that, that um, I mean, it's all amazing to, to grow. I think that the, um, for, for what I like to eat, certain seasons, I'll just get really jazzed up about eating certain of the crops that maybe I've grown for years and years, but then suddenly it's like the, the rock star of my personal diet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like this season, it's, it's become um, the for say. Oh, just love it. really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And, right, right. And and last season I was just really into kohlrabi, which you know, I'm still into kohlrabi. It's not that yeah. it goes away. It's yeah. just that certain ones just become, you know, the your go-to. Yes. Um, and so what it. are some of your go-tos these days? Oh my gosh. I always have some basic things, but I was 
I was listening to somebody recently was like, well, if you keep having all of your favorite things all the time, then you don't feel like you have, you know, like, oh, I have to have, I'm kind of like, oh, I have to have all these basic things. I'm going to try to switch it up and be a little bit more basic. Like maybe my salads will have like three or four things versus, you know, eight to 10 things. But you know, <laughs> I, you know what I really love? I've always loved iceberg and I don't think uh -huh. you grow, do you grow iceberg at all? We only do it sometimes, and that's during the cooler times of the year. Yes, yeah. we, we do grow it occasionally, but that's not one of the main ones that we grow. Yeah, I don't know. It's just so, like, crisp mm -hmm. and juicy and amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But then, like, the store-bought stuff, even organic, I mean, it's all the mm -hmm. same. It tastes the same, right? But then you can get right. it, like, the farmer's market, and you're like, this is iceberg lettuce? Oh, my gosh. It's a right. Thing, you know? Yeah, herbs. Yes. I think herbs take any dish from like, oh, it's okay to, uh -huh. oh my gosh, this is right. amazing. This is everything, right? So, yeah, fresh herbs. I think that just even if you don't know how to cook very well, if you can just sort of throw in some roll, like the Thai basil, right? Or yes. just mint. Thai basil. I don't know. It's kind of perfect in anything and everything. So, oh, it's so good. I yes. know. <laughs> so delicious. Oh my gosh. So great. And have you always had a green thumb or not? Not really. You know, I used to um, be sent to weed the garden at my uh, parents' house when I was a child. And I, I mostly remember sort of muttering and disliking the whole proposition. <laughs> um, and I, I don't think until I really planted things and, and grew them in a way um, that, you know, I could harvest them and eat them that, that I really um, started to learn more and, and that made me a better grower. I think my point of entry initially to horticulture mm -hmm. because I didn't grow up in a productive landscape. I grew up in an urban landscape. And so it was more the ornamental horticulture of like trees. Right. And, um, and I did have my, my family's grove um, was uh, fruits and it's, that's sort of of a different, category but you know really the, the trees you know yes. and and so I the trees are like when I think of does someone have a green thumb I think of more like herbaceous plants I don't know because trees it's not the same yeah but trees are not as hard really I mean they they take a certain type of care but they're just generally more resilient herbaceous plants really require just constant maintenance right and trees can be kind of forgotten for a while in a way and they're fine yeah it's like the trees take more time from like you know getting it into the ground and then it's stable and then you're like okay right. you're good whereas right. you know herbaceous it's like a constant oh you can't leave like yeah, you can't leave and forget these it. crops yeah. not even for a day yeah you know I mean, people ask me why I don't travel, and it's like, because of these. Because <laughs> I would be and, freaking out. Right, right. Yes. And so the green thumb, to my mind, it's about commitment, and it's about um, just being there for them and being nurturing and responsive to them. Um, so I think that when I was younger and just doing other things, I, I no, I would not say I had a green thumb. I would say I developed one over time with um, the desire. Uh, I learned what I needed to know, and then I've done what I need to do. That's how I got the green thumb. Well, that's yeah. very inspirational for those that <laughs> tell themselves, I don't have a green thumb. I'll never have a green thumb. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> learn, practice, yeah. or, you know, over repetitive, yes. right? <laughs> which is great, which I guess kind of answers the next question of, do you have any advice for new gardeners or, or farmers? I guess it's just keep practicing, keep, keep trying, keep at it. Yes, definitely for gardeners, keep at it. Um, 
And, you know, for farmers, I would say that's a whole different thing. <laughs> I mean, gardening, I would say to gardeners, if you love gardening, don't necessarily think that you're going to love farming right. because they're, they're very different. Um, it's like, if you love cooking, don't think that you need to open a restaurant. Go open a restaurant. <laughs> Not the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, you know, definitely with gardeners, my, and we do organic gardening workshops and really help people to get good crops off and, and have, um, low maintenance gardens by giving them some, some knowledge that that can just change the game but um, just a couple things that I could say right now would be um, to understand the uh, the location of your garden initially right like if if you start out with a garden that doesn't get uh, the sufficient sunlight has poor drainage has a legacy of contaminated soil and doesn't have irrigation water available, any of those kinds of things, that's a really um, hard place to start with. So really it's, it's kind of like if you're building a house, you want to make sure you got a good foundation. Right. And, um, and the same goes for a garden. Sometimes you need to just recognize like, okay, maybe you need to find a different spot to garden. And um, that's that's something to consider for sure. And then, yes, um, just uh, be gritty and keep going. Expect that there will be setbacks and um, keep on planting. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, if there aren't any other final words, because mm -hmm. that was that was beautifully stated. Um, and, and I loved hearing the whole story and getting down to the details and just seeing you there. It looks so peaceful, you know. <laughs> my gosh and that you live there now was there a house there when you bought the land or did you build no we built it so you have the perfect place the perfect land dreams dreams do come true you guys <laughs> do come true I love it with a lot of hard work <laughs> with a lot of hard work not just sort of wishing and you know just a little magic <laughs> wand right it's not really like that right <laughs> Well, thank you so very much for your time. And of course, always look forward to seeing you at the market, trying all the different goodies. Thank you for all of your brilliance and dedication to your mission. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yes. And thank you for, you know, it's, it's you and folks like you that make us um, able to do what we're doing because it's, um, you know, I'm always delighted when I see you at the market and I know that you are uh, so uh, appreciative of the crops that we grow and you're also working tirelessly to communicate and connect with people around your own process of discovery and um, you know, we're, we're all in this um, world um, looking for the fit and looking for the, the connections and, and um, going along our ways as, as best we all can. Um, and, so and, and, and your, your part in it as it connects to the farm and out into the larger world means a lot to, to me personally. So thank Aww. you for this opportunity to be here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate that. I will see you. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you.